One. Good evening. It's Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. Tonight we have another in the series of Parkinsonism educational hangouts. Uh, we have with us here Dr. Abdul Rana, a neurologist from Toronto and a well-known Parkinsonism educator. Um, welcome, Dr. Rana. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Okay, so leg swelling and Parkinsonism we're going to to uh, to handle tonight. Well, I forgot to mention, and let me start off with a question: How common is leg swelling in Parkinsonism? Leg swelling is not very common. However, it does occur time to time. Uh, you see patients uh, sometimes they don't report, and when you examine them or poke your finger in their feet or legs, you notice. Uh, the leg swelling, uh, quite prominent. Uh, usually it's noted by patients uh, in most cases. Sometimes they may not pay attention because uh, it does not cause any itchiness or any rash and it does develop gradually. So because it does not cause any um, rash in most cases or itchiness or pain and develops gradually so they may just ignore it or they may attribute this to some other causes. Because most patients are slow, so they are sitting in the chair most of the day, especially when Parkinson's disease advances, or they're sitting in a deep couch, uh, and uh, uh, because of uh, lack of ambulation, uh, so that uh, causes the dependent edema in these patients. So, however, the leg swelling uh, is an important side effect of some of the medications which we use to treat Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Amentadine and dopamine agonists, they are uh, known to cause uh, leg edema in uh, these patients. The leg edema in these patients usually affects both legs uh, in most cases. Uh, and uh, as I said, it's uh, usually mild to moderate. However, it can be sometimes uh, quite uh, prominent or obvious. Sometimes in cases of amentadine, uh, the leg edema uh, could be accompanied by a rash. Uh, it's a web-like rash called levido reticularis, which is the side effect of amentadine. Uh, although levido reticularis does occur without any edema, but a mild edema could be uh, uh, could be coexistent with uh, uh, with levido reticularis, and this rash could affect not only legs; it could affect the upper extremities as well. But mostly, we see it in the legs. What is done if this is due to medications? Uh, most of the time, the leg edema does uh, require medication to be discontinued and they have to be replaced or substituted with other medications. Uh, but in some cases, if you reduce the dose of medications, uh, then the leg edema may resolve. Uh, and if you suspect anything else, such as a DVT or uh, uh, heart failure or renal issues, then you have to address those issues as well. Or if you suspect other medications besides the Parkinson's disease medications, then you have to uh, change or communicate with the family physician if they could be replaced by other medications. What are some other co other causes of uh, leg swelling and Parkinsonism? Yeah. Uh, in Parkinson's disease, uh, most of the causes of leg edema are the dependent uh, because of sitting uh, with their legs dangling uh, or, as I said, medications such as amentadine or dopamine agonists. Uh, however, in uh, uh, these patients or other patients, there could be uh, many other causes which could uh, cause leg edema, uh, such as DVT. So if these patients are sitting for a longer period, uh, such as taking a plane flight, so uh, in addition to being uh, in a dependent fashion, they could develop uh, a deep vein thrombosis, a clot in their legs. Uh, which uh, could make the leg uh, painful, sometimes it could be red and uh, seem um, somewhat inflamed. And uh, these clots in the legs could uh, travel to lungs, they could become, uh, uh, they could become PE, they could embolize, and in some cases they could be fatal or they require uh, extensive treatment with anticoagulation and require investigations uh, such as the ultrasound and VQ scan and so on. Uh, the other causes, uh, some of the causes uh, could relate it to heart, 
such as in congestive heart failure when the heart is weak and dilated and then it's not able to pump effectively into the body and therefore a backlog of the venous return so that can cause both legs uh, swollen so these patients also need uh, to be treated aggressively with either diuretics uh, or they have to see a cardiologist and uh, the treatment of heart failure has to be done. Uh, kidney failure remains another important cause. Uh, these patients uh, may have nephropathy of uh, many different types and they could develop leg edema and in these patients the leg edema is also bilateral. Sometimes osteoarthritis if it involves ankle joints, so that could cause uh, leg, uh, leg edema or ankle edema or foot edema. And uh, in case of arthritis, uh, the, uh, there is a pain in the ankle and uh, it does increase when the uh, patient uh, stands up or with the weight bearing. And uh, uh, there could be fluid in the ankle which need to be aspirated. Uh, so uh, these patients may have unilateral edema only like one side is swelling, if the arthritis is involving one joint more than the other, so then it would be one-sided, and sometimes it could be bilateral as well, and these patients could have uh, pain in their knees, or there could be swelling of the knees as well, uh, in addition to the ankles. Uh, so in addition to these things, there are certain other drugs. Uh, this, they are not used in Parkinson's disease treatment, but because Parkinson patients could have other coexistence medical conditions, so they could be taking some other drugs, uh, such as calcium channel blockers for high blood pressure, such as amlodipine, or some of the diabetic medications could cause uh, leg edema as well. I think the medications uh, which can cause leg edema, the, the list is uh, quite extensive, and they should be reviewed carefully, and probably they can be substituted with other medications which can treat the same condition but may not cause edema. How can these patients be managed, Dr. Rana? Uh, when, when you see these patients, I think the first step is to ruling out uh, as, uh, serious causes, uh, so uh, such as uh, a clot, or DVT, or a heart failure, or renal failure. Most of these things or most of these causes could be ruled out based on history, physical examination, and some investigations such as ultrasound of the leg, uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, uh, if they are taking amantadine or dopamine agonist, uh, then uh, uh, you can also uh, stop those medications or decrease their dose and reassess the patients. Also, history of travel is very important because uh, uh, most patients, uh, uh, from Toronto especially, they go uh, down south in winter, and when they land there or when they come back, uh, so they, they, they come with the leg swelling. So that's not a very uncommon scenario for us to see. Um, uh, so otherwise, uh, uh, you may need uh, some blood tests and uh, uh, check the creatinine function, echocardiogram of the heart, if you suspect cardiac causes. And in case of deep venous thrombosis, as I said, an ultrasound may be needed of the legs. And uh, um, these patients should be advised to avoid uh, sitting with the legs dangling. They should also walk around. Um, if, uh, they, if they are in the plane, they should uh, take some breaks, stand up and walk down because that helps with the, uh, with the venous return and stops the pooling of the blood. Uh, lying down with their legs elevated might help uh, if there is no other cause and it's determined to be only uh, because, uh, because of uh, legs being dependent. If th then they can lie down at nighttime, uh, put a couple of pillows under their feet so that would uh, help. Also, properly fitting shoes and socks uh, might help. And uh, sometimes sports stockings or compression stockings uh, could be taken, used, and they could help. Uh, losing weight um, obviously could help if these patients are obese. And um, in addition to that, uh, I think the avoiding the tight clothing around the thighs, it could be helpful in some patients. Okay, very good. Okay, that, uh, anything else to add, Dr. Rana, on leg swelling and Parkinsonism before we close? Uh, some patients in, uh, in our personal experience, uh, they may not report leg edema because, uh, uh, because it's gradual or it's not causes other symptoms. So uh, when you see Parkinson's patients, I think uh, 
every patient who is taking dopaminergic medications with a mentadine, your feet and legs have to be checked very carefully, and uh, you should l look for the pitting after you poke your finger in, in their foot or uh, thigh, and uh, you should wait uh, for uh, to see the pitting and if it uh, develops uh, uh, so that you can assess the leg edema is there. So okay. I think the cleaning these patients uh, during physical examination is quite important. So it's a pitting edema or non-pitting edema? No, it does leave uh, usually. It is uh, pitting, pitting. Uh, okay, okay. Very good. Well, thank you, Dr. Rana, for uh, the hangout. And uh, this can be seen at parkinsonism.tv. And we welcome you to join us again uh, tomorrow night. Good night, Dr. Rana. Thank you. Good night.